Rejoice because the word is coming to build you up. Rejoice, rejoice again. I say rejoice. Somebody should be shouting. Somebody should be jumping. Somebody should be glad. Rejoice again. I say rejoice. Glory be to God. Say the word is working in my life. Say the word is working in my life. Glory be to God. Glory to God. You don't have money in your pocket. Say the word is bringing money to my pocket. Glory be to God. You're not even saying it well. Say the word is bringing money to my pocket. Hallelujah. He said in Isaiah 55, he said my word is like a seed. I send it out and it must not return to me void. Glory be to God. What will happen if you respond to God's word as it's coming out and you begin to declare the words yourself and receive it? What will happen? You are putting a seal and saying, devil, don't touch it. This service was my service. Glory be to God. Do you know it is possible? Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. When Jesus was moving, where was he going to? If you read the story well, he was going to the house of what? Jairus. To raise the daughter that had died. On that singular journey, a centurion came and collected his own. Glory be to God. That same journey, the woman with the issue of blood came and collected what? Her own. But Jesus was coming for who? Jairus. A word can come that is for you if you are sleeping, beloved. Another person will collect that word. You know why? Because God said his word will not return void. So that word that was sent to this place must do something. Yeah. Glory be to God. <laughs> so when the word comes that before this year is over you are prospering on all sides. Yeah. If that word is for you but you are blowing guy because of one baby you are toasting in the church you don't want to shout too much although that person will collect it too. Glory be to God. What time is transformation time? What time is change time? What time is encounter time? So you must be alive. You must be alert. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You know, I don't know why. The devil is so stupid. Some of you, if you want to sleep, you open your Bible to sleep. At home. And then when the word is being prayed from the Bible, you still sleep. Why is it word and sleep? Glory be to God. You are your own, no? You sleep when you read the Bible. Now they are preaching the Bible to you. You are still sleeping. How will God help you? How will God help you? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. See, the word is working in my life. Say, I'm a man of the word. I'm a woman of the word. Say, I rejoice at God's word. Say, I rejoice at God's word. Say, I rejoice at God's word. Somebody shout glory. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Well, somebody just receive your healing right now. Just for good measure, receive your healing right now. I don't care to know what that pain is or that ailment is. Uh, by the anointing of God's spirit. Uh, the Bible says he healed all our diseases. Uh, I stand on that word and I proclaim. Uh, you are healed totally in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! You see, you get to a level in this business, right? In this journey, that you can be listening to my message in your room and you'll be shouting. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's not never entirely. Nobody is there, you're on your own. And you're just celebrating. It happens to me sometimes. I mean, I just hit one and I pause it. I say, Glory. Woo! So what happened? Sorry. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I just received something. Glory be to God. 
Sometimes I'm driving, I'm hearing the word, I just scream out. I receive something. I'm responding by faith. Glory be to God. My spirit is alive. Glory be to God. Before you come to church, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Prep yourself. Be ready to receive. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Well, just have your seat briefly. Amen. But we're going to, I want you to put this to prayer. When you hear the word, respond to it. So, two kingdom keys. One is prayer. The other one is giving. Someone say giving. Say giving. Someone say giving. Say I'm a giver. I'm a sower. In God's kingdom. So quickly this morning, we'll be looking at giving. You can title this give and flourish. Give and flourish. Let's open the Bibles quickly to 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. So you are rich. If you are born again, you are rich because the desire of God is that you prosper and be in health. Third John verse 2. That you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So the same way that you have been saved and you, 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 you are free from uh, eternal separation, you are free from the bondage of the devil, God wants you to be free from every kind of suffering. Glory be to God. Say, I'm free from all suffering. From spiritual suffering. From mental suffering. From physical suffering. Say, I'm free. Very important. He says, you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So never in your life open your mouth and say you are poor. Never in your life open your mouth and say you are broke. Because if you are born again and you say that, it's an insult on the finished work of Christ. Because that finished work of Christ positions you to manifest prosperity here on earth. Praise the Lord. So don't look at your pocket to, or bank account to determine whether you are rich or not. You are rich because of what Christ has done. Say, I'm rich because Christ has made me rich. Say, I'm rich because Christ has what? Me. Say, though he was rich, yet for your sakes, he became poor that ye might be rich. There was a beautiful exchange. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Okay, let's start from verse 1. Um, 2 Corinthians from, okay, but good. For as touching the ministry to the saints, it is, let's go to NL, uh, do I have NLT? Or New King James? Okay. For as touching this ministry to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. Next verse. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to, to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal had provoked very many. Let me read, read the NLT. I think they're having some challenge with the other versions this morning. All right. Verse 1. I really don't know, need to write to you about this ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem. For I know how eager you are to help. And I have been boasting to the churches in Macedonia that you in Greece were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up many of the Macedonian believers to begin giving. Now, one thing you can quickly see is that when you begin to develop the right mindset, 
about who you are in Christ when it comes to finances, you will have no problem in giving. The problem is you don't know that you are rich. You think that you are poor. That is why you have problem in giving. You are still walking by sight and not by faith. So, Apostle Paul said, I have learned how to abound and how to abase. That means that, yes, in life, you're going to have challenges. Sometimes you may not have all the resources physically manifested that you need per time. But it doesn't mean that you are poor. And the devil knows that the way to manifest your prosperity in Christ is by giving. So, giving doesn't make you rich. Giving is the process of you manifesting the wealth that you have. Hallelujah, somebody. I will take it again. Giving doesn't make you rich. Giving is the vehicle to manifest your wealth and prosperity that you have in Christ. So you can have Christian A that, and Christian B. Christian A and B are both saved. They are rich in Christ. But Christian A is Akagom. You know what Akagom is? I only have somebody. Do you know what Akagom is? Akagom is Akagom. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's a type of adhesive gum that is so strong that cannot be removed. So we use that word to describe people who are very selfish. Glory be to God. And so you can see, Mr. A is a giver, is a sower, and is prospering. And then, Mr. B is Akagom and doesn't give. And is not prospering. Guess what? If he's born again, he's rich in Christ. Though, but he will not be able to manifest it. It will be limited in the manifestation of the wealth that's upon his life. So, giving is the system of God in the kingdom. Advance the children of God. Giving is the system of God in the kingdom to advance the children of God. Now, why is giving one of the keys in preparing for an encounter? When you give towards a kingdom project like Cam Gigal, you are partnering with the kingdom of God to wage a mighty war on the kingdom of darkness. So it is a wonderful opportunity. It doesn't come all the time. Because when souls are saved, when you give towards this meeting, when souls are saved in that meeting, guess what? You save those souls also. You may not hold the mic one day in that program, but if you dropped money for that program, the blessings and reward that are coming from the souls that are saved, people that are liberated in that meeting, is also accounted to you. Glory be to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you are partnering with God. You are opening your heart to God to say, you know what? You have made me prosperous. I'm rich. So I'm partnering with the kingdom work. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's quickly begin to run. Verse 3. But I'm sending these brothers to be sure you really are ready. As I've been telling them and that your money is all collected. I don't want you to I don't want to be wrong in my boasting about you. So Paul was boasting about this church that they are givers. He said, we will be embarrassed not to mention your own embarrassment if some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready after all I had told them. So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promised is ready. But I want it to be a willing gift. Someone say a willing gift. Not one giving grudgingly. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get what? A generous crop. Verse 7, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly. Someone say, don't give reluctantly. If you give reluctantly, it's almost like you should, you should not even bother giving. There is nothing that we have that God has not given to us. 
So stop having this hoarder mentality. There's one that withholds more than is necessary. The Bible says it tended to poverty. So nobody is saying you should not be giving, giving, and you don't have any clothes to wear. You don't have any food to eat. You are now just because I, I'm a giver, so I must give everything. No, no, no. Nobody is saying that. But as you walk with God, you will understand that you need to grow in the grace for giving. Glory be to God. When you say, I have the nature of God, what you are also saying is that you have the nature of giving. Because God is a giver. Glory be to God. For God so what loved the world. That he did what? He gave. God gave. The expression of love cannot stop in your shouting. Woo! Right on, right on, right on. And you don't drop one error. Amen? Bible says where your heart is, your treasure is there. So if you truly love God and his work, you won't have a problem giving. When people argue about tithe, say 10%, tithe is not doctrinal, tithe is not biblical, it's not this, 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 I say it's okay, there's no problem. There's no problem. Tithe is Old Testament, I agree with you. Guess what? New Testament is not 10%. New Testament is all. Amen? <laughs> you say, I say yes. New Testament, read it now in the book of Acts. They will go and sell all they have, the land, and they will bring everything to the apostles' feet. They will not be sharing. You take this one. Just imagine we are doing that now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Many people will die like Ananias. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't have the eater mentality. Have the sower mentality. If you want to be prosperous, if you want to manifest your prosperity in God, you need to have the sower mentality. The Bible says he gives seed to the sower and bread to what? The eater. Everybody talk to me. He gives, God gives seed to the sower and then bread to the eater. One process is reproduction. The other one ends. When the bread comes to the eater, that bread cannot be reproduced. It ends there. But when seed comes to the sower, it can be reproduced. Every time you drop a financial seed, you are initiating a circle of reproduction of your prosperity. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And God is the one giving both. So when God looks at you and says you are an eater, you pray, oh Lord, oh Lord, give me, I'm hungry. They give you bread. But when God looks at you, you have positioned yourself that you know what, I'm a giver. So you are eager to give. You are looking for opportunities to give. Even when you don't have money, you are saying, what can I give? I need to sell this my wristwatch. I need to give something. Because you understand that the sower is a kingdom partner with God to bring about the will of God. This is the best way I can explain to you. A sower is like a pipe. So when God is looking for vessels to use to bless people generally, he's looking for people who we give, who we sow. So don't desire to be prosperous because of your needs. Desire to be prosperous because you want to be used of God to be a blessing. Glory be to God. There's a big difference. Don't desire to be blessed only. Desire to be a blessing. Once you are able to make that mind shift, trust me, it's just a matter of time. You will definitely manifest your kingdom wealth and kingdom inheritance. Praise the Lord somebody. And you know, before you start saying, well, pastor, you don't understand, do her. We don't have money. We don't have money. Go to 2 Corinthians 8, verse 1. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 1. He said, now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. They have been tested by many troubles. So Macedonia was a poor church. They didn't have money. He said, they have been tested by many troubles. And they are what? They are what? Verse 2. 
Go to verse 2 quickly. During a severe testing of affliction, the abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed into the well, into the wells of their generosity. Let me read this. It says, they have been tested by many troubles and they are very poor. I said, Apostle Paul did not even speak faith here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> they were that poor. The man didn't say, well, they are rich in Christ. No, no, he said they are poor. He said, but. Someone said, but. They are also filled with abundant joy. What can make a man be joyful, rejoicing when they have money? It's a revelation of who he is in Christ that is rich. He says, which has overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford. Are you hearing this? Hello? Hello? Are you with me this morning? They gave not only what they could afford. That means some people here were stretching their faith here. So when I say give what you have, don't come and just drop something that your faith is not stretched. Because the Bible says it gives seed to the sower. So if the sower has enough faith, God will release the seed into your hands. But far more, they gave far more, and they did it of their own free will. Verse 4, they begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers. So they saw giving as a privilege. Not like today, in this, in this, in this country today, so pastor need to preach for three months. Probably will give one error. <laughs> I know people that complain more about tithe and giving. If you go and check, most times they don't give you. So I look at the pastor. He's enjoying. <laughs> Ask him how much have you given the whole year. The people that really understand giving, they don't complain. Because they have a deeper understanding of what it is. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I remember one time, we were about to get married. We are saving, myself and my wife, we are saving our money. You know, young couple want to get married. So we are saving, we are saving, and all that. And then I was, my, my former church, I was my pastor's PA. And um, that day, we just moved into a new facility. And I like, was happy and all that. Uh, that period, rather. So, somebody came to give a testimony in church. But church was still buying so many things, AC and all that. That the Holy Spirit told him that he should he wanted to buy AC in his house. And then the Holy Spirit said, No, don't buy for yourself, buy for church first. He said, Ah, and this money you just saved it. So he came to meet the pastor, and then the pastor told him, I said, How much? In fact, the thing was paining him so much that he was trying to convince the pastor to go for a lower grade of AC so he can save some money to still buy his own. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it was just being real. He said, Pastor, this one is not too high. He said, no, that's what church wants to buy. That's level of... And so he, he, he gave it sacrificially. And then he now said that somebody just came to their house and said, I it's so hot. Why is nobody AC now? No, what? How much is AC? He said, one point something million. The guy just signed the check. And they will give them way more than the money they sold. Praise the Lord, somebody. So everybody clapped. Wow, 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 wow. I said, that's great. As I was clapping, the Holy Spirit said, it's now your turn. I said, turn for what? <laughs> this life, we came per head. Though. What's the problem? He said, so, I said, no, no, no. He said, now, that money that you and your fiancé, you are saving. He said, go and sow all of it into this project. I said, I bind you, devil. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you, you, know, you know the verse of God, though? Can the devil ask you to give to God? The devil is the kingdom of darkness. He can't ask you to give to the kingdom of light. I was buying, I said, eh? And I said, well, in fact, you know, God, I can't even control her. So, um, you know, I will ask her. If she says no, I can't force her. I was just trying to, thinking that she would say no. Interesting, that day she came to my church. So her God was setting us up. She came that day to church. So as we were driving, I said, I said can you imagine? <laughs> I this is what God was just telling me today. He said, we should so, so everything. I thought she would be against it. And I'm like, ah, you see, God, I tried. I told her at least. So I just told her, ah, imagine the money we're saving. God said we should just give all of it. She said, ah, if it's God, no problem now. I said, you say what? Ah. In my mind, I said, you are disappointing me. <laughs> I thought 
just we bring opposition. So I would say, oh, God, have mercy on us. Our faith is not enough for this. So just, you know. He said, oh, it's God, no problem now. I said, what? If I told me he sold all that money, then I had one laptop that my brother gave me from abroad. Very nice laptop. He said, that laptop, give it to this particular pastor. He just gave me like two, three things. See? I said, okay. I said, are you serious? You are sure? You don't want to pray about it or something? He said, no, let's give it. I said, it's okay. And we gave the seed, gave the laptop out and all that. Let me tell you what happened. Where I was working then, I was working in a telecommunications company. They had delayed one of my promotions like that for a year. Without meeting anybody. After that, the ground. I just noticed after one or two weeks, ah, people by themselves were not carrying the fire. I said, I know, you shouldn't be on this level now. Ah, they will stand up. I'm talking of big GMs and guys. Who, they will carry the fire. I just see them looking at all of them. Eh? I said, this is powerful. He said, no, 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 no. We must not talk about it. They will go and meet. Ah, a promotion that was there for one year came. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. That is it. That is it. You will think that is it. That is not all. The life of a sower is continuous. You just move from one level of glory to another level of what? Glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, you should not be looking forward to the day you make your first million. Be looking forward to the day you will sow your first million. Glory be to God. You're not even excited about it. Because you like the first one. You, you are waiting for the day you make your first million. No. Wait for the day you will sow your first million to God. What you don't understand, if you are a giver, the pipe, when water is passing through, won't it be wet? Talk to me now. Will the pipe be dry and water is passing through it? So God has made you a pipe. Resources will flow through you to be to be to bless. Thousands and millions of people worldwide in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will provide food for people worldwide. Amen. You will provide homes for people worldwide. Amen. You will build hospitals for people worldwide. Amen. Because you are a sower, because you are a giver, you will be a vessel that God will use to be a blessing to people that you don't even know. Amen. That is what we are talking about. Glory be to God. So they see it as a privilege. Look at verse 7. Or verse 6 rather. It says, so we have all titles who encourage your giving in the first place to return to you and encourage you to finish this ministry of giving. You see, the issue of giving and money is a big issue in the Bible. See Apostle Paul addressing it. Like we will do this morning. Deji, please pass around the sleep. Glory be to God. You are learning how to give and we'll teach you. You will give. And the first for of you, for you, you, this will be the first time you will be giving sacrificially. You will give for Kamgega. So you are not giving because God needs your money. Hear what I'm saying. If you don't drop one error, the meeting will hold. It will be powerful. It will be great. I can show you about that. But you would have missed a great opportunity to move from one level to another level. I remember we had a meeting like that back in school. And I was telling people to give and they were... So, the slip you are being, you are, you are being given, just write your name and then write what the Lord is laying on your heart to sue for Kamgege. That's all. Nothing much. Nobody will pursue you, by the way. So, don't think... It's a free week, free week gift. But it's a seed. It's a, it's a Kamgege divine citation seed. Just write your name and the amount that you want to sue. That's all. And then you return to the ushers. God will be praying over those, those things. Why? If you really mean it, hear what I'm saying. If you really mean it, God will put the seed in your hands before come get girl. Hallelujah, somebody. So you may not have it now, but if that is your heart desire, I want to sue 100K for this meeting. I want to really be a blessing. I want to partner with God to write the amount. You will see. God will put the seed in your hands. 
So don't be under pressure. There's no pressure. No pressures. And the lady, I was able to sew just like that. So we were just in Yabatek then, and we're just there, and I was teaching them sew. We, we had a program coming up. I said, just, I think John was there also. Just plan for the program, sew for the program. And then one lady came, and she said she wants to sew her school fees. I, I said, hold it. <laughs> I said, even me, the pastor, I'm not sewing my school fees. Calm down, calm down, calm down. What's happening here? Then the school, 3,000 naira. Am I correct, John? 3,000 or so. Very, very, but it was very big then, you know. I said, ah, no, 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 no. Just don't worry, still saw something. I said, no, that she's led to sow it. And when she spoke, I saw faith in her heart. And I allowed her. What am I saying? If you are led, you can give sacrificially. You can give something that will cost you. Look at verse 7. It says, since you excel, talking to the Corinthian church now, since you excel in so many ways, in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, your love from us, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. Praise the Lord. You can speak in tongues very well. You can do this. You can do all this. You give. You say, also, this giving is also a very critical part of the journey. To your neighbor, neighbor, give. So, it is your divine inheritance. It is your divine responsibility to give. Mark chapter 10, verse 30. Mark chapter 10, verse 30. Can I have that? Verse 30. Give me the KJV. I think KJV is better for this. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Okay. But you shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. So he's telling us here that people who sow, people who give sacrificially to the kingdom, he said you will get rewarded though. Not only in eternity. He said in this what? Time. Someone say in this time. You will get your reward for sowing and giving in this time. And also in eternity. So giving is one of the kingdom keys to manifesting the plan of God for you when it comes to your prosperity. Seated here, for every believer here, you are a potential kingdom billionaire. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, you are a potential because God is looking. See, the end time agenda, money is very important. Too. When you see Bible say money answers all things, you know what he's talking about. Money is very what? Important. The gospel is free, but we need money to push it. Hallelujah, somebody. You say, what, Pastor, what do you mean? Ah, if we don't have uh, money to rent this place, where will we sit down? Oh, this mic is not, is somebody paid for it, right? Praise the Lord. So it's very important. And everybody in our lineage gave. Abraham gave. And he gave willingly. When he was returning from the battle, he met Melchizedek and he gave. That's where the tithe came from. He gave a 10%. He gave. And we all know what happened to Abraham, our father. So it's not enough to say, I father Abraham. Have we? As many sons, many sons as father Abraham. They are me, I am one of them. And so are you. Hey, let us pray the Lord right hand. You know, we like all those things. I'm a child of Abraham. Time to give. You, be, is the, you are not checking your phone. Why are you checking your phone? Nobody is calling you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we think we don't know those trick. So people will not even take phone call and go outside. You are, you are pursuing your, your destiny. <laughs> you are running away from your financial destiny. You will not pretend. Usher gave you an envelope. You carry a phone and be going to the toilet. My friend, you are, you are postponing your day of manifestation. Say never again. Never 
Say never again. Once you are a sower, seed will gravitate to your hands. I've seen it work. I've seen myself tell myself I will sow a particular seed. When I'm saying it, I don't have the money to sow. But because I'm a sower, seed gravitates to my hands. Glory be to God. One time God led us to give one of our cars. And I told my wife, I said, well, God is here again. We were so as praise the Lord. And he said we should give. You see, when you when God leads you to give, rejoice. Glory be to God. Because he said to promote you. That's what it happens. Giving time is promotion time. Glory be to God. So don't sleep on it. Anybody don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. Don't say they're just saying their own. If you don't, though you have that kingdom inheritance, you will not manifest. It's not a cause. It's not a cause. It will not. This is a system in place. And you need to get used to that system. And what I'm saying is that if you just change your mind concerning giving, you will see God move mightily. God is not committed to your wish or your desires. God is committed to his purpose. God is not committed to your wish or your desires. God is committed to his purpose. So, if you are giving, you must ensure that your giving is aligned with his purpose. Any giving that you cannot align with God's purpose, you are just wasting money. Praise the Lord. So the idea, like I said, is that if you are a pipe and God can get it through you, he can get it to you. If God can get those resources through you, he knows that this money comes through Michael or comes through John or comes through Dami. If this money can come through you, it will get to people. God will get it to you. So you need to make up your mind that God, I'm ready to be a sower. Say, I'm ready to be a sower. I'm ready to be a giver. Go to Philippians 4.19. We like that scripture. And God shall supply all what? According to what? His riches. Read verse 18 first. Go to verse 18. Praise the Lord. The problem we have in the church, we just pick up one scripture, we don't even read it in context, and we just run. Say, but Pastor, you said that God shall supply my needs. Are you giving? Praise the Lord. <laughs> go to verse 16. No, let's go to verse 15. Of Romans 4, verse 15. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help. Are you hearing? When I first brought you the good news and then traveled from Macedonia, no other church did this. But Paul is very interesting, man. You know, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't do well to him, he will, he will remind you. <laughs> he says, even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you give, you're not giving to support. You're not like a philanthropist. In the kingdom, when we give, we give so that you get your you get a reward in your account. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Are you seeing that? Now, see, they are building up on something based on giving. Then I enter verse 19. That based on how you responded and you gave, and now my God shall supply all your needs. You just leave all those scriptures and you jump. You don't give. Offering. <laughs> tight. <laughs> seed. <laughs> and you are shouting Philippians 4.19. Keep quiet. Praise the Lord. Keep quiet. So we need to understand that it's a principle. Alright? And we need to align ourselves to that principle. Quickly to this morning as a roundup. How to give. How to give. 
how to give. Number one, give sacrificially. Give sacrificially. Let it come from a place of sacrifice. You see that we just read now in Philippians 4. It said that your giving is a sweet smelling sacrifice. Let it come from a place of sacrifice. You will not be comfortable about it. You may give up something for it. But ensure that you are giving sacrificially. There is nobody who sows in tears that will not reap in joy. Glory be to God. I don't know if you have worked on your farm before. But farm work is serious work. Because all your body is moving. So most times the farmers are in tears. They are in pain. But they keep on doing it because you know that one day this mango tree will come up. One day the cashew tree will come up. Glory be to God. So it's okay to give sacrificially. It's okay for somebody here. The money you are saving. Maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart now. You have been saving money for something, whatever it is. I just heard my story and the Holy Spirit just told you now that do the same thing. Don't say the, it's, not the, it's not the devil. Don't say bind devil. Praise the Lord. I say the Lord is very quiet. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So who cannot who must have enough courage to shout hallelujah because of money. <laughs> so people have not been looking at my eyes since so this message. They just be looking elsewhere. The Lord will help you. So even if that money, you may have to give, like that lady that sold her school fees, that was sacrificial. So give sacrificially. The Macedonian church gave sacrificially. They were poor, but in that poverty, they still found something to give. That proves that giving is not a function of how much you have. It's a function of who you are. Giving is not a function of how much you have. It is a function of who you are. If you change your mindset to become a sower, you will find yourself giving. Number two, give joyfully. Someone say give joyfully. In 2 Corinthians 8, he talks about don't give out of compulsion. Give, be, be, be joyful about it. See it as a privilege. Rejoice that you are giving. That God has found you worthy to give towards any kingdom project. Give joyfully. Celebrate when giving. Giving is a delight. And you must see it that way. Number three, give out of love and not compulsion. Give out of love and not compulsion. Same, same, eight. if you read the whole from verse one all the way down, you see it there. It talks about you giving willfully. All right? So determine. Nobody is forcing you. Nobody is saying you must give this amount. But you need to give out of love and not compulsion. Number four, give with understanding. So it's very important. Give with understanding. Give with understanding. Give with understanding. And that's what I'm taking them to teach us this morning on what giving is really all about. Nobody is trying to manipulate you. Nobody is trying to put their hand in your pocket. We are trying to help you to manifest your kingdom prosperity. Always look for opportunities to give. Don't let, write this down, don't let a week go by without you sowing something to somebody's life. If you really want to be a sower, you need to do it frequently. So look for, even if it's biscuit, sweet, you know, whatever it is, at your level, just ensure that you are releasing something to other people as the Lord leads you. Number five, give unconditionally. Don't give God with conditions. Don't give God with conditions. Give unconditionally. Some of you, you want to blackmail God with your seed. If you give me this job, I will give you this. You are doing trade by butter. <laughs> now, of course, I know there are examples in the Bible. Somebody said, if you give me a son, I will give back to you. Yeah, we know. But does that your trade by butter, does it align with its purpose? If it aligns with its purpose, all well and good. Because when Samuel's mother was saying, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you, she was aligning with the purpose of God. And pam, I won't open. But if your own trade by butter is for what you will just consume on yourself, you are joking. Give 
without conditions. Number six, give in faith. Give in faith. When you give, you don't provoke God in that sense. What you do is you open yourself to receive more. When you give, you, you open yourself to receive more. I remember one time, <laughs> glory be to God. There was a lady who was believing God for the people of the womb. And I just, I didn't really go to pray for her or something. I just was passing by a working place so many years ago. And uh, she just took me and said, Pastor, I don't like this, your phone. It's old. I said, really? Who are you using for now? She said, no, no, hold on. And she just called somebody in the office and said, please, that was near Computer Village. Take Pastor to go and buy a new phone. I said, what's happening here? I followed the person. They said, choose the phone you want to... Uh, well, I, I picked the phone. And some, I was not like some of you that your eye is too big. You say, ah, phone. Yeah, we picked the most expensive one. I picked the one that is okay, that's not too expensive. And I go back. I say, ah. I say, really? Wow. I say, it's okay. I say, it's okay. I say, I'm not praying for you. I say, but if by this time next year, you don't have your child, I'm not called. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you can provoke the man of God, but you can't provoke God. That's what I'm telling you. If you give to a man of God, you can provoke his own faith. I said, I don't care to know what the doctor is saying, miscarriage. That's your business. By this seed you have sold, now that I didn't ask you to sow, you sold. By this time next year, if you don't have your child, I'm not called. You say amen. I say, if you like, say amen. If I like, don't say amen, that's your problem. I entered the prophetic zone. Glory be to God. Well, that boy should be about 15 years old now. Praise the Lord. Yeah, 15 years old there about now. If you don't sow into my life, you are doing yourself. Glory be to God. Because me, I am I'm walking my own journey. I'm sowing into people's life, so I will keep on being prosperous. But if you sow into my life, you are putting something in your own account. That's what Apostle Paul said. He said it's for your own good. Praise the Lord, somebody. Number seven, give in line with your God nature. Give in line with your God nature. Quickly, where and who to give? Number one, give to the church. Where and who to give? Number one, give to the church. What do you give? You give offering. What do you give? You give tithes. Tithe is 10% of what you earn. It's a system that has been put in place to ensure that you give consistently. Don't stop arguing about it. Alright? If you want to give more than that, give more than that. But don't give less than that. Because we are now in the new covenant based on better promises. So what you should be giving should be better than what you are giving in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord somebody. So instead of arguing about whether it is doctrinal or not, either start from there or give more than that. So give special seeds to kingdom projects. Open 1 Corinthians 16 verse 2 quickly. First Corinthians 16, verse 2. Okay. Thank you, Lord. On the first day of each week, you should each put aside a portion of the money you have earned. Don't wait until I get there and then try to collect it all at once. Where offering came from. He said on the first day of each week, which is Sunday, in our own context, you should each put aside a portion of the money you have earned. Don't wait until I get there and then try to collect it all at once. So, you need to prepare. So, give to the church offerings, tithes, and the special seeds. And give as God has prospered you. Give as God has prospered you. Number two, give to your parents. When the Bible says honor your parents, part of honoring your parents is to give to them. And make sure you give consistently. Give to parent figures in your life. Give to your family members. So give to parents, give to your family. It's very important. Number three, give to your pastor. Glory be to God. Go to Galatians 6, verse 6. Give to your pastor. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Galatians 6, verse 6. Those 
who are taught by taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. And it, like I said, in Philippians 4, 7 to 19, it says, when you give, more will abound to your account. So, giving to your pastor, giving to the sent one to you, giving to the prophet over your life is going to help you say, believe his prophet and you shall what? Prosper. It will bring about the speedy manifestation of the prophetic word over your life and even of prosperity inheritance over your life. So give to your pastor. Very important. Number four, give to other ministries and other friends. Give to other ministries and other friends. Glory be to God. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 15 and then we just tie it up this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father. If I don't share these things with you, I will be doing you a great disservice. I am not where I am today because I was just loafing around. No. I'm here, I'm where I am today by the grace of God. And the grace has equipped us to apply these principles and we're seeing the manifestation in our life. And I pray for everyone hearing me today that as you begin to act on the word, you will see results in your life. In the name of Jesus. First Corinthians 16 verse 15. You know that Stephanus and his household were the first to, of the harvest of believers in Greece. And they are spending their, spending their lives in service to God's people. They are spending their lives in service to God's people. If you don't give your heart and give your all to the kingdom, God doesn't need your money. God wants you to totally surrender yourself. Surrender your purpose, surrender your life, surrender your agenda. Your money is involved. But don't feel for one minute that if I give my money, then I can begin to live anyhow. So this is money I'll be, eh, no worry, let's go and do yao yao. We'll drop the seed. No. Nobody wants your yao yao tight. Nobody wants that. So you must give yourself. In Matthew 6, 3, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added to you. Ideally, when you give yourself wholly to God, you won't have a challenge in giving your money. The problem most times is that you are yet to totally surrender to God. Every part of you. That's why you say, God, I love you so much, but this money matter, don't go there. And God is saying, he wants to go there this morning. That there's no part of your life you will not surrender. When you come to a level and you tell God, God, there is nothing you will give me that I cannot give back. That's the level Abraham came to. He was looking for this son for so many years. This promised son, Isaac, came and God said, come and sacrifice this son back to me. Actually, although Abraham didn't physically sacrifice Isaac, in his heart, eh, Isaac was dead. He was going to... And guess what? God recognized that Abraham sacrificed his son. He said in the scriptures, that if a man could give his son, how much more him? So that means God saw it because God looks at the heart and God saw in Abraham's heart that Isaac's head was already detached. In, in Abraham's heart, Isaac's head was not on the neck anymore. So, based on what God saw, God said Abraham could give his son. That if Abraham, a man, could give his son, how much more him? What is your Isaac today? What is that precious thing that you need to lay at the feet of the master? To say that this thing cannot be greater than my God. Stand to your feet, everybody. And begin to talk to God. I say, Lord, I lay down my Isaac. I lay down whatever it seems that is so precious that I cannot give. I lay it down today. I lay it down today. I don't only give money. I give of myself. I give of my heart. I give everything to you, Lord. Oh, talk to God. 
and say, Lord, your word says you give seed to the sower. Lord, I receive seed today. I can hear you praying. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, I surrender totally to you. I surrender totally to you. Thank you for your word. I've heard your word this morning. I thank you because your word has come to equip me, to embolden me, to take the right steps. Oh, Father, I worship you. Everything that seems to be so precious that I cannot give, I lay it down today. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. I want to hear people praying all over this room. See, everything that seems so big, I lay it down today. Ah, you are not praying. Lift up your voice. Don't whisper. Say, I lay it down today. Nothing will take the place of God in my life. And I receive the grace forgiving this morning. Huh? And I begin to act it out with Cam Gigal. Huh? I will sow the greatest seed I have ever sown in my life for this Cam Gigal. I want someone to be speak right now. That this is an opportunity to change levels. Huh? I will sow the greatest seed. Are you praying this hour? I will sow the greatest seed ever. 